Hi, it's Chris Michaels here, the Director of Communications at Waza Media Systems. I'm joined by Barry Owen, our VP of Engineering. Barry, thanks for coming in. Sure. We're here to talk a little bit about low latency, and it's a big, hot topic in uh, the streaming industry. It is. Um, but uh, how about first and foremost, let's talk about what is latency? How do, you, how do we define it, and, and what are the misconceptions? I mean, latency is usually defined as, as basically the glass-to-glass -glass time for a frame of video to get from A to B. Right, so you have you have a capture device, your camera, what have you, um, stuff it into an encoder, send it into a delivery system, and ultimately out to a player at the end. And and each level of that chain can actually add a chunk of latency. You'll get a little bit from your encoder. You may be transcoding and packaging, and then you know on the delivery, and then and then the player may need certain amount of data before it can start to stream. All those add up. Right, and and even that time to first frame, like that player building. Yeah, the absolutely. Buffer. I mean, I mean. Players typically require enough data, including a keyframe, before they'll start playing anything. And you can obviously play with that and how players start. But traditional, you know, RTMP-based streaming with, with Flash players that we've had in the past was, was quite good at this. It was, you know, two to five seconds of latency typically, and it, you know, was pretty performant. And then as, as Flash began to be deprecated for many reasons, um, including the fact that it's expensive to scale on the edge. You know, the industry switched over to these HTTP-based streaming formats, which are inherently chunk-based. And the initial implementations of these chunks were typically 10 seconds long. And, and the players were architected such that they liked to see the third chunk before they'd start to play. So there you have 20 plus seconds of latency right off the bat. And the advantage of these formats is having chunks of video on the edge, it's real easy to scale. You can just cache them and play them out to gazillions of people. Mm -hmm. So it's much cheaper and more efficient to scale these formats. However, the cost is latency. And for some usage scenarios, that's just not an option. Right, I mean, if, if you look at kind of the latency continuum, we, we published a, a paper a while ago, you know, five seconds is typically the traditional broadcast, what you expect, five, five to 10 seconds in there. Yep. Above that is when we start getting the spoiled user experiences where you know, your neighbors, you, you might be streaming a, a game on uh, a streaming service and your neighbor is watching it live over the air and they're celebrating a touchdown or a goal or something before you even have a chance to see it. And that's, sure. those are typically those HTTP based, like HTTP. Yeah, or you, or you got the tweet before you saw the video. You exactly. Know, things like that. And now when we look downstream, uh, of faster delivery, like that's when we start talking about a little bit about low latency, correct? Yeah, so you, I mean, you could characterize low latency as somewhere in that broadcast range, right? You're going from the, the around the five-ish second mark. And then, you know, you get into scenarios where it's ultra low latency, which are, you know, ideally as close to real time as possible, but certainly around that two second mark. So there are a lot of real time delivery or expected you know, ultra low latency delivery uh, use cases. Can, can we talk about some of those where it really is imperative for you to have that super fast delivery and, and not wait for, for broadcast? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think of use cases like, like auctions where you're, you're watching a live auction. Well, you'd probably like to get in before the, the next guy gets in. Um, you can think of sports as in, as in gambling or, or, you know, think of a horse race or a dog race. You know, you want to be able to to see that action as live as possible. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about, you know, there's HTTP base, which give us that chunk size, uh, or the, the chunks and uh, that delivery about 20 seconds, maybe it, right up. Depending the on how you tune it, right? I mean, you can, you know, they started at, at very high, large chunk sizes, very efficient on CDNs, um, you know, few requests and things like that. You can tune it down to a couple seconds and still have it be fairly effective. But there's a trade-off in there. Well, you, you, you trade off with, for a CDN, for example, if, if someone tunes the chunks down to two-second chunks, they're going to have to handle a lot more HTTP requests to their edges than they would with bigger chunks. Mm -hmm. So there are trade-offs for sure. But you know, with that, you can get the, you can get the, the latency down to the you know, eight to 10 second range. But, and then there's also quality considerations, both for playback or what you're going to send out. Um, you know, if you send something that's uh, too high bit rate, it takes longer for a, a buffer to build. Sure, I mean, the, the, the larger chunks of super high quality video take longer to download. Um, it can cause your, you know, your player to take longer to switch up or down based on 
based on your available bandwidth. And if you don't have enough bandwidth and your and your CDN's just trying to shove really big chunks down, they, you, you will buffer. You'll buffer for a long time. Right. So um, what are some of the ways and, and, and the protocols that people can choose on if they really want to deliver something that's lower latency today? Sure. What are the options? So basically you're trying to, you know, one of the things you're trying to do is kind of replicate that RTMP flash experience, right? So there's there's several technologies that look promising, right? There's there's WebRTC, for example. There is highly tuned chunk-based streaming with things like LHLS and CMAF. And then there's also the, the protocol we're working on, and it's not just us, others are doing this as well, which is using a WebSocket connection to the browser to kind of mimic, mimic that continuous stream experience you see with RTMP. And there's also things like UDP and SRT, which give so, you some additional options. Sure, so S SRT is certainly an interesting option, particularly on the ingest side, where you get a, a very low latency connection over, you know, to your ingest point. It, it's a bit more challenging on the playback side because you can't send UDP directly to a browser. So you would have to have some sort of mechanism, whether it's the WebRTC data channel or something like that, to use that on the, on the playback side. Now, at Wowza, we've been really focused on always providing options, right? We, we have a lot of options in terms of protocols that we support for Absolutely. ingest. Uh, we've also worked on the Wowza protocol and making sure that mm -hmm. that works both from our Wowza GoCoder product through engine out to uh, even our player options. Um, you know, what else do, do we support within the Waza ecosystem? And then, of course, our, our ultra-low latency service. Yeah, so certainly Streaming Engine is, is a very capable tool, and, and we always endeavor to support as many things as practical that we see a market need for. So we do support WebRTC ingest and output with Engine. We do support SRT ingest and output with Engine. Um, and then, as you mentioned, we have our WOWS protocol that we can deliver both over TCP or over TCP with WebSockets, which are kind of two different styles of delivering the same thing, but um, one goes to a browser and one typically goes to a device. Right. Awesome. Well, we've got a lot more we're going to be talking about in our next session. Uh, we're going to go over protocols. We'll also talk about some of the optimization choices that we have, uh, but stay tuned in our next segment as we go into that.